couldn't have any kind of stature, so they wanted him to be a shoeshine boy. My father said he would not play a shoeshine boy. He didn't give a damn what they did, right? And then he turned around and he said, well, how about an elevator boy? He said, okay, I'll play an elevator boy, but I will not play a shoeshine boy. So when I stopped to think about that, I said, he got them to give in just a little bit, but what's the difference between an elevator boy and a shoeshine boy? It's really not anything different, except that my father wasn't going to give that, he wasn't going to give all the way down. Mr. Bolton, I'm the one that's sure delighted to see you back. Thanks, man, you're looking fine. Uh, I hate to bother you, boss, but I thought maybe you could find a spot for me in your new show. Well, right, you take a tip from me, Ben. Your spot's right here in this elevator. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. A lot of times I hear, especially black people, talk about what, why did those people in those days act like that? But that's the only way they could make it in pictures. I mean, they didn't have any money to make pictures. The white people had the money, so the black people had to go along. And the dues that they had to pay, Man Tan Mall and all these old stars, they, they call them handkerchief heads and whatnot, but that's the only way they could get in. And once they got in, they tried to make it a little better. And today, it's all again the different, but it's people like my father and Mantan Mullen and Willie Best, those guys are the guys that brought, made it able for the guys to do what they're doing today. So you got to pay your dues, you know what I mean? Well, he just had a job. It was glad to have it because uh, to be a token. Uh, I like to be a token now someplace <laughs> because that's all you're going to ever get. <laughs> There were uh, always places where black guys just couldn't work because they weren't accepted there. It's like in, uh, you could take Chicago f for an instant, even as far back as in the 40s and 50s, there were certain places downtown that never had a black entertainer or a musician in the, uh, the inside of the doors. They just were not hired. We all, most in those southern towns, stayed with private, f private families because there was no hotels for us. And maybe they have one little, sometimes they'd have a little hotel, black hotel, own hotel, but most of us stayed in private families. Now with Cab Calloway, we had a train. We stayed on the Pullman. We used to go do all our one-nighters through the south on Pullman with the Pullman. They'd pull the train into the town and sidetrack our car. We had a baggage car and a Pullman car, and we'd play the dance, come back and get on the train, and they'd pull us off the next day to the next town. My father played what they call a southern circuit. When you went down to the south, they had a line down the middle, and the whites would be on one side and the blacks would be on the other side. And they'd be listening to the same music but they, they couldn't intermingle. I mean, it, that was one bad thing about all of that. And they would still intermingle, though, but they do it kind of slick, like, you know, wouldn't be out in public, you wouldn't do that. But um, my father didn't play the Southern Circuit too often. He did, that's for that reason, that's the reason he didn't, because he didn't like it. The next number is What Did I Do To Be So Black And Blue? Black and Blue is an interesting song because it's unique in Waller's output in that its title is an obvious reference to the conditions that he and members of the black race found themselves living under. What did I do to be so black and blue? Uh, it's an enormously poignant refrain. He was not a Langston Hughes. He was not a Paul Robeson. I, I, we have, to my mind, no indications that he had a deep, profound commitment to uh, exposing injustice. Uh, I think rather he preferred to, to satirize in a very delicate way, perhaps not always uh, perceptible to white people, uh, some of the foibles of their civilization, and preferred to laugh off the indignities that he had to suffer as a way of dealing with them rather than fighting them uh, in, an, in an open kind of way. That may have been a matter of personality.
sitting inside. And, but when he started to entertain, it would all go away. And he just entertained. He had that way of getting it across and entertaining. And then when he gets through entertaining, he might, that hurt might come back again. But that's the only time you would know it, because while he was entertaining, you'd say, gee, he'd start laughing. The minute my father walks into the place, it would just light up, like Luna Park. I mean, it would light up. The people would light up. Everybody, hey, fat slip, so and so and so. And then he'd start right off. And he loved that kind of atmosphere. No one to talk with all by myself. No one to walk with, but I'm happy on the shelf. Hey, misbehaving, saving all my love for you. You fine rascal, you. I know for certain the one I love. I'm through with flirting, it's you that I'm thinking of. Hey, misbehaving, saving all my love for you, for you, just you. Like Jack Horner in a corner, don't go nowhere. What do I care? Your kisses, my dear, are worthwhile waiting for. <laughs> Believe me, dear. He was on a train and just kept going, that's all, till he died. And he'd be so tired, sometimes he'd lay in the bed for three days. Now, he'd been up 10 days. Maybe he'd get a catnap here, a catnap there, drinking, eating sparsely. He lived in the fast lane. He, he, when he went to California, and on his way back, he died on a train. He dissipated a lot, drank a lot, rest broken. Takes a toll after a while. So he had so much talent based in him that I guess, you know, you notice the people with a whole lot of talent, they don't usually live very long. They, they're here, they do their thing real quick and get out of here. Sweet essence of pink buttermilk, look what's going on here. Come out of there, you rascal, you. That's easy, isn't it, Johnson? Take me, darling, take me to heaven. No one to talk with all by myself. Uh -huh. No one to walk with, but I'm happy on the shelf. It misbehaving. Saving all my love for you. You better save your confection for me. I know for certain the one I love. You do? I'm through with flirting. It's you that I'm thinking of. Hey. In misbehaving, uh. I'm saving my love for you. Oh, pat me on my back and like call me Shawnee. Like Jackie Horner in the corner. Uh. Don't go nowhere. Really? The only like thing there, that he had time for was partying and music. So nice, so and crazy. basically... It all came from the music, because my father would only stop partying for the music, which meant that the music came first. Come here so I can tell you something, baby. Like Jack Horner in a corner, don't go nowhere. I don't care. Your kiss is always waiting for. Oh, but I don't stay out late. I don't care, That's though. fine. I'm home about eight, me and my radio. Well, all right. And now, here it comes. That one and only composition, Honeysuckle Rose, by yours truly, little fatsy watsy walla. Huh? And here it is. Mm -hmm. Take it away, take it away, boys. We in the groove for it, Honeysuckle Rose. 